Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to The Longest Journey. All right, we have learned the four stories. Let's go ahead and get quizzed. Run up there. I, w I wish I could just set run as the default. Oh, well. Are you ready for the questions now? I am indeed. Ask me your questions, Thor. Yeah, okay, that doesn't rhyme. Yes, ask me the questions. In the Tale of Winds, which mountain did Iwana fall from in her vain attempt to fly higher and further than anyone else? Um, uh, uh, Kilimanjaro? I was actually going to do that. I didn't even realize it was uh, one of the options. Mount Everest? Mount Kilimanjaro? Mount Bactana, the Tower of Light. Hmm. Hmm. Man, uh, if I hadn't heard that uh, uh, story, I, I don't know how I would have gotten this. Actually, I imagine that if you hadn't heard the story, you wouldn't have this option. Mount Bactana, the Tower of Light. That is correct. In the Tale of Stars, what did Mona see in the sky? that helped her find her way home. The International Space Station. Okay, no. Uh, stars? Uh, an airplane? The Spirits of the Five Tellers. The Spirits of Five Tellers. That is correct. That's a lot of bank tellers. In the Tale of Sea, what creature did the Lost One battle in his quest to recover the sacred jewel? Leviathan. A Snapjaw? One of the Merum? The Octawu. Where is my mouse cursor? There it is. The Octawu? That is Whatever correct. My final question to you is this. In the tale of Homecoming... Which is the mean airspeed of an unladen was given swallow. To Iran by his teller when he returned from his pilgrimage? <clears throat> a kiss? The homecoming party? A broken pot to teach him that absence may break a heart in two. A broken pot to teach him that absence may break a heart in two. You have correctly answered all my questions, and so have proven your knowledge of the four tales. You are the Windbringer. The teller would see you presently. Would see me pre presently, but not will. Hmm. Okay, in we go. It is really dark in here. Elation teller, is there anything to look at? Doesn't look like it. She's the teller. She must be over a hundred years old. Uh, how do you know? Maybe, uh, maybe these people only live like thirty years. Come closer, human. Let me eat you. I mean, um... Closer. I cannot see your face. Well, that's because it's dark in here. Closer still. Come sit here by me. Uh-oh. There you are. <laughs> you see, my eyes are not what they used to be. Ages ago, I could spot a ladybug crawling up a straw of grass from 15 tree lengths up. Now, I have a hard time seeing my supper. That's because it's my dark ears. in here. Balance be praised, my ears, they are as good as ever. I could hear you outside, learning the tales my children tell. You are a good listener, and a fast learner. They were interesting stories, and your people told them well. That is what we do. The Elation are the keepers of the tales, and I am their teller, the one who must know all the tales told since the day we came to this world. Can I get 30 bucks in once? How can you do that? How can you remember every story ever told? The secret is to tell them often and to tell them in your own words, not the words of your ancestors. So they get Doesn't distorted. Does mean that the stories change with every generation? Yes, as all tales must. Change is important. Otherwise, the tales will have no meaning to us. Not for they actual will just history. Be words, and we do not care about the words. We care about what the words tell us. How long have your people been telling stories? Because you know it's totally not like uh, uh, an intelligent species to tell stories. I say that knowing only one t intelligent species. Whatever. How long have your people been telling stories? Since the beginning, human. Since we came to this world a long, long time ago. You're not from Earth? From Arcadia? Not according to our tales. We came on a great wind before the divide, when the Earth was one and humans had yet to learn of magic. 
and science. Powered by burritos. We were a different people then, and the tales we tell from that time are vague and incomplete. Like myths and legends, the younger relation pay little attention to these tales. Sometimes I worry they will be lost with me, these tales, and I am getting old, very old. Isn't the point to find another teller who will remember them all? Uh, I came to you to find answers to some important questions. I came to you to find answers to some important questions. Ask, and I will try my best to answer. What is the mean airspeed of an unladen swallow? Uh, have you heard of an ancient god or dragon that lives beneath the sea? Have you heard of an ancient god or dragon that lives beneath the sea? Once. Long ago, when my people lived in harmony with the Merim, there were stories of an old god worshipped by the Merim who resided deep in the darkest depths of the ocean. According to legend, the old god had once brought the Merim into their realm, into the ocean, and he was now sleeping, resting, before the journey back. Oh, Cthulhu. Great. Okay. To a great ocean amongst the stars. When the time came, he would gather the Merim and bring them home with him, back to their world, to their ocean. Strangely enough, we have a similar tale. It is said that the great wind that brought us here will someday return to bring us back to a place where we can soar forever on warm winds. Like heaven. In a way, perhaps, but without the need for any of us to die. The great wind will just sweep us up and carry us away. Every evening before I go to sleep, I recite this tale to myself. It is a comforting one. I don't know how uh, telling yourself a tale is actually all that comforting, but okay. Uh, what do you know about the Drak King? What do you know about the Drak Kin? The Kin are numbered four. Or so our tales tell. Two in this world, two in the other. The mirror world. The white and the blue. The red and the green. Does it, do the do ones in the mirror world are? have uh, beards? No. The tales never say. The kin are elusive. They keep to themselves. I have never seen one myself, and I doubt any of my kind has. The tales do say that our past and our future are tied to the fate of the kin, but how I would not pretend to know. This is one tale that has yet to be told. Do you know anything about the Guardian's realm? This is human business. You not know more than I. Eh, I'm a little bit of a stranger here. The tales. You remember more than humankind has forgotten. Please, I need to hear what you know. That is very little. The Guardian's realm is home to the Guardian in his tower. No one is permitted within except the Guardian who was, the Guardian who is, and the Guardian who will be. And of course the Dryak kin, who were instrumental in its making. Have you ever heard of the existence of a hidden entrance to his realm? Oh, yes. Yes, I have heard tell of such a thing, though I would not know where it is. I gather that one of the kin may be able to tell you. Yeah, if only I could Thank find them. I don't have any more questions. I am glad I could help you with some answers. I have some other questions. I'm the Windbringer. I know you are. <laughs> it's but what strange am I? to me to hear those words spoken. I did not think they would be in my lifetime. No one ever does. But here you are. Standing in front of but me as real as the sky is blue. Sitting, actually. I'm sorry I have to ask, but what is it that the Windbringer is supposed to do for you? I did not expect you to walk in here and have all the answers, child. The balance has both blessed you and cursed you, and it has sent you here to do what it wills. Goddamn balance. Windbringer is so manipulative. The first sign of the great wind that will take us away from here. For a long time, the Elation have lost the strength they used to have. Speaking of which, you have a our burrito. Our bones have become weak, and our wings fragile. Where we used to be able to soar for days on strong winds, we are now using our legs to walk rather than fly. Why this is, we do not know. Ten Yen! You know of the reason for this? I'm just guessing, but it makes sense. Go on. The tales also say know, that the Windbringer will milk. unite us with our past and end the age-old strife. I know. You must make peace and be reunited with the Merim. You share a common ancestry. I have always thought we did. The tales were too similar, the signs clear. 
but my people, they, they will have a difficult time understanding why. Oh, come on, there's only four of them. Can be. If you don't, both the Elation and the Marin will die out. When war broke out between your people and you were forced to move up into the mountains, it compromised a precarious symbiosis. A substance called Tanyan was abundant where the Marim and the Elation lived in close proximity. It brought fish and heat and light to both your people. And calcium, but apparently? Now, living up in the mountains, your way of life, your diet, your customs and habits, they've all changed. And that's probably the cause of your brittle bones and fragile wings. Now, I'm still going to go with a lack of calcium. Must make peace with the Marim and restore the balance between us so as to strengthen us both and prepare us for the journey that will surely come soon. When our sitting is over, I will speak to my people and I will elect one representative from the Elation to meet with the Marim in the place of your choosing to open a dialogue. I guess it's time for you to talk to your people and for me to make arrangements with the Marim. Where do you wish for our meeting to take place, Windbringer? You want me to decide? Um... I know. Send your ambassador down to the ancient caves by the beach. Inside, there are remnants of an old Elation settlement and a Marim city. It's a good place for your two people to meet, don't you think? Perfect yes. place to fight, yes. And could you ask if they would bring their half of the stone? The stone? You have the other half? We have held on to it for centuries, knowing that someday it would be of use to the Windbringer. It will, trust me. Then we must make haste and arrangements. It is an important day, so let us not waste light. Go and wait for my ambassador in the caves. Okie dokie. So nice when the conversation just automatically advances for you. Don't have to. Well, and uh, we just get amazing. teleported. This place is so beautiful. And the scent of sea and rock. Nest. This scent is a home. I is it? Okay. This was home a long, long time ago, according to the tales. We lived in peace with the wet tail, uh, with the marrow back then. Now you'll be able to live in peace again. And with the Tanyan bringing fish to your doorstep, you'll be able to eat well and restore strength to your bones. Soon you might even be able to soar on the winds for days like you used to do. I hope you are right, Windbringer. And I hope that the wet, the Merum, will see the sense in it too. They are coming, are they not? Maybe. They said they would. Hush, I hear something. Do you though? I don't. Oh, hi. Didn't see you come in. We are here, Water Stiller, as was promised. Good. Now, as representatives of your respective peoples, you, the Queen of Amirum City, and you, Guard to the Elation Teller, must fulfill the prophecy and join the two parts of the one stone. I feel like we one side isn't sending an appropriate person. Again, Alation, and that we may live in peace and prosper. As do we, Marum. And we pledge to do all we can for this to happen. Well, this seems easy. No. The stone is now so much whole, fur. Windbringer. And the elation and the mirum will once again be as one. You may take it with you. Well, thank you. Thank you. The both of you. Come now, April. And we will take you to our sleeping god. Yay! May his wisdom guide you and lead you down the right path. About time. Bye, Crow. Talk to you later. Well, I'm just teleporting around. I'm okay with that. Oh, goody! It's like Abyss! This has got to be uh, awful for her clothing. How is she not getting crushed to death? Hi. Hi, Cthulhu. How's it going?
Sand. Large rock. Okay, well, let's take a quick look at uh, the stone, the elation stone. It's the second half of the piece of the stone disc entrusted to the elation and the marum a long time ago. Okay. And let's go ahead and read our diary. Saturday, late afternoon. The Marum and the Elation are well on the road to forging a lasting union. And it was so easy, too. Just double check to make sure that I read the last one. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, they've suffered enough as it is, and I'm happy I had a chance to help them. Come to terms with their past and face the future together. Okay, April is getting a little sentimental here, but who can blame me? I worked hard to get them talking. Uh, damn it, so I deserve a little credit. At any rate, the journey continues, this time into the lair of the Marum Sleeping God. Unfortunately, the Elation weren't able to tell me as much as I would have liked, but at least I have another stone now. That makes two, and I'm pretty certain this god, this giant kin, will be able to help me out with some definite answers. I deserve that too. Uh, we're, we're still just assuming that this is a dry king. That's a weird rock. It just doesn't look natural. You think? The sand is covering something. The sand is covering something. That's a weird rock. It just doesn't look natural Alrighty. can I uh, poke the rock feels more like a shell than a rock uh, I don't think it's a rock I think it's alive well you were supposed to be coming down here to see a sleeping god come on Peekaboo! Small orifice. It, it this is this is not going to eat me, is it? It's some kind of organic sensor. Hello, poke it. It's soft and spongy. Uh, I just poked its eye. Hello, is anybody in there? Spooky. Well, I guess it's an invitation of sorts. Hmm. Large orifice. You know what? I think we're going to find out what's inside this large orifice in the next episode. A little bit early, but I imagine that we're going to have some lengthy conversations. See you next time, everyone.